Here's example two with uh, determining the equation of a trig function from the graph. So uh, we did example one in the last video and we went through all these steps here. Um, so we won't go, uh, we won't talk about them in as much detail, but we are going to go through all these steps of course again. Um, but uh, all the details that we did in example one, um, we'll skip some of those because we don't want to repeat them. Um, and we want to try to keep the video short. So uh, if you want to copy this worksheet, if you want to follow along, click the link in this video description here. Um, and you can open up this worksheet and print it out and follow along. Um, and if you want to know more details, uh, check example one first and then uh, you can come back here if you'd like. So anyway, um, we're just going to follow these steps here. So step one, uh, find the vertical shift B, if any. Remember in that video we said that uh, B is defined to be the max value plus the min value divided by two. Okay. So um, here, and also you can just kind of eyeball it and see, okay, there's really not a vertical shift. Um, you know, if you're sort of used to that uh, thing, but um, if you want to show work for it or if you have to show work, you can just say B equals the max value, which we see is 2, okay, the maximum Y value is 2, plus the minimum value, which is negative 2, and then we uh, divide it all by 2, okay, so remember B is max plus min divided by 2, okay, that's what's going on there, um, that's going to give us uh, the vertical shift. So 2 plus negative 2, that means 2 minus 2, which is 0. So this is 0 over 2, which is just 0. So there is no vertical shift. Okay, so that's good. Um, now, uh, step 2, um, determine whether to use sine or cosine. So remember, our answer is going to be either this function here with the numbers or this function here with the numbers. So we want to know, is it sine or cosine? So uh, remember, when we did example 1, um, well, first of all, we know there's no phase shift because that's what we're dealing with here, no phase shift, and we just found out there's no vertical shift. So uh, we know that sine of x goes through 0, 0, okay? and cosine of x does not go through 0, 0. So what we do then is we look at our graph and we see, oh, hey, this does go through 0, 0. Okay? So since it does go through 0, 0, uh, it's going to be a sine function, not a cosine. Okay, so remember, uh, sine goes through 0, 0, cosine does not. Okay, so um, this is a sine function. So graph goes through 0, 0. So, uh, so we use sine. Okay, so I'll be a little carefree with the grammar there, just a little bit um, to save space. So uh, graph goes through 0, 0, so we use sine. So we're going to use the sine function here. Okay? So, uh, so far we have y equals a sine omega x. Okay? We already know that uh, b is 0, so there's no plus b anymore. So we just have this uh, so far. Okay? Now, um, that's it for step 2. Step 3, find the amplitude absolute value of a and use it to determine a. So, um, now we come up here and we say, okay, absolute value of A equals, so remember there were a couple different ways we could do it. We can look uh, the distance from the max value to the middle. Okay, and remember, uh, since there's no vertical shift, now the middle is just at zero. So the distance there is a uh, two, right? Or if you want to legitimately show work, just remember that the amplitude, the absolute value of A is the max value minus the min value all divided by two. Okay. So the max value, which we already know is two, minus the min value, which we already know is negative two all divided by 2. Okay. A lot of 2's flying around here. Uh, 2 minus negative 2 is 2 plus 2, which is 4. Uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay. So um, here, get the amplitude 2 just by looking at the graph, or if you want to show algebraic work for it, you can do it like that. Okay. So uh, since a is 2, so a equals 2, or sorry, so, uh, the absolute value of a is 2, so a itself equals 2 or uh, a equals negative 2. Okay, now we have to know which one is it. Okay, so this, just like in example 1, we want to uh, ask ourselves, okay, has this been flipped upside down at all in any way? So we know um, y equals sine of x looks like this. Okay, remember in example 1 we uh, drew a picture of y equals negative sine of x, which uh, came out horrible, so I erased it actually, but uh, let's try it again here. So um, x-axis, y-axis, probably just be a good idea to do this before starting the video, but too late now. Um, so sine function, just take this, flip it upside down, 
uh, and we'll have something kind of sort of like this, kind of sort of like that going on. Yeah, that's not terrible, that'll work. Okay, so uh, this is y equals negative sine of x. Okay, so uh, for positive sine, we increase through 0, 0. For uh, negative sine of x, we decrease through 0, 0, right? So uh, we already know that this function is a sine function that we're looking at here. Okay, uh, it's a sine function, and what do we see? We see it's decreasing through 0, 0, okay? So it actually has been flipped upside down okay, to give us something kind of sort of like this. Okay. So decreasing through 0, 0. So uh, we see here it's got that same kind of uh, pattern there, decreasing through the origin uh, as this negative function here. So a has to be negative. Okay. So um, let's move this back here. Zoom back in over here. Okay, so again, since we're decreasing through 0, 0, that means that the graph of the sine function was flipped upside down. So our a value has to be negative. So uh, the graph... decreases through uh, 0, 0. So a equals negative 2. Okay, so um, we already know that a has to be 2 or negative 2. Now since the graph is decreasing through the origin, uh, that tells us that a must be negative. Okay, so since it has to be negative and one of these guys, then it can only be this guy. Okay, so uh, a is negative 2. Okay, that's uh, Great, that is wonderful. That's it for step three. Step four, so step three, um, that might be kind of the trickiest step because it's maybe something sort of new and different and it's, it's a little bit different with cosines and sines. Um, so when we get to example three in the next video, um, we'll see maybe something different, uh, spoiler alert. Uh, anyway, uh, step four, find omega from the period. So remember for the period, um, we just have to look at the graph and see, okay, what's the length of one complete cycle? So you can start really anywhere you want that's labeled um, and look at, uh, look at the length of one period, but I like to start at zero. Not always the best place to start, but in this case, I think it'll work. Um, so if we start here at zero, follow along to the right, when we start repeating right here at x equals four. Okay, so once we pass four, we see that, okay, this pattern is going to repeat again. Okay, it's starting to repeat there after four. Okay, so um, from here to here, that's uh, t equals four. Okay, so remember the period is denoted um, with t, okay, capital T. We talked about that in an earlier video. Um, so what we have is a t equals four. And also in general for sine and cosine, t equals two pi over omega, or really, in general, general, t equals 2 pi over the absolute value of omega, but for these types of problems here, getting the equation from the graph, um, we're just going to take omega to be positive. Why is it okay to do that? Well, because we already worried about positive and negative when we got a, okay? Um, so we can just assume that omega is positive because if omega were negative, we can use even and odd properties. Um, so remember, cosine is an even function, sine is an odd function. If we took omega to be negative, we can use even and odd properties to simplify um, and make omega positive. Okay, so um, we don't have to worry about omega being negative. We can just always take it to be positive because otherwise we can simplify. And we already dealt with positive and negative when we did A okay? um, in step three. Okay, so we don't have to do that again. So that's nice, that kind of simplifies things. So t equals four and t equals two pi over omega. So both of these guys equal t. So together, uh, this tells us, so these guys have to equal each other. So four equals two pi over omega. Okay? So multiply both sides by omega, um, divide both sides by four. Okay, so the fours on the left cancel and we're just left with uh, omega on the left. And then what happens on the right? Uh, omegas cancel and then two goes into four two times. So we just had that one pi left on top. So omega equals uh, pi over two. Okay, so um, that's it for step four find omega from the period. Now step five, remember not really a real step, just put everything all together. Substitute a, b, and omega into the equation from step two. Our equation from step two is this guy right here. So uh, b, we already know zero. a is negative two. Omega is pi over two. So now if we toss a and omega into here, um, we're going to get y equals uh, negative two sine pi over two times x. 
and that is our answer here for example 2 and uh, example 3 coming up in the next video.